Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Ryan with Gamer Tag Dad and today we're continuing on with the Elden Ring. Now I've actually been on holiday for the last week so there isn't a huge amount of clips here. There were a few more however I absolutely jacked my audio somehow. There was a huge delay on, on the audio compared to the video. I managed to salvage the Radan fight which was the whole purpose of this video. So at least that's in here now. Slight spoiler, that is coming up. Now, I put this fight in to start with because it's really weird. Now, I get someone in to pair with me just to see if we can get rid of this Crucible Knight because you've probably seen the clips before and last week. I've been struggling with this fight. Get it right down to a small fraction of HP and then I seem to die always. Now, this fight is no different. I seem to get it down to about, I don't know, 10% HP. I die and then I just move on for a bit and I, I come back a little while later. Obviously you won't see that because it's, it's pretty boring, just not me doing much. And I come back and instead of the mist being there to load up the Crucible Knight and the weird doggy beast thing, there's nothing there. The, the mist has vanished and when I walk through it loads straight into the start, not of the fight of Radan, but the start of the party room where you can talk to all the NPCs and then start the fight itself. It's almost like this whole fight never existed. So I don't actually physically get the drops from this boss. I don't get the weapon, which is quite, I think it's, is it the rune, I think it's the rune hammer. It's quite a cool looking weapon. I don't get it, but I still pass this fight somehow. I'm not, I'm not really 100% sure what happened there, but I don't know whether <laughs> I thought I'd put it in here. If anyone notices what the hell happened, then drop it in the comments below. But I do swear this was the last fight of, of me trying this. Because I got a little bit, I got disheartened, but I went off and did something else for a bit. Thought I'd go up and level up a little bit. Now, you see my teammate there does actually die. Which is a bit of a shame. He wasn't really much of a tank. And I probably should have done a lot better. But the knight shortly absolutely combos me. And uh, that's kind of the end of that, really. Now, I have been working on the editing, because from last week, one of the biggest critiques I had was that the clips were just kind of... It was clip, boom, clip, boom, clip. There was no transition. So I'm trying something here. Instead of it just throwing straight in, <laughs> trying a little fade out and see, see, see how that goes down. Now, I just threw this clip in here because I quite like the cutscene. I did go ahead and collect the both part of the medallions to activate the, the uh, lift here. Unfortunately, again, that was one of the clips that got completely jacked, so I couldn't really use it. I did, like I said, salvage at least, I think it's two or three clips for this video. There's another one we missed, like the Godskin, well, well, one of the Godskin fights up above the, by the windmill, which was still the creepiest thing in this game, which was a shame I lost it. Now, if we had had that, you would, for, for those who haven't actually played Elden Ring, the windmill ladies are creepy. And they're pretty much friendly until you get too close to their god. And then suddenly all hell breaks loose and they start turning on you pretty damn quickly. It's like within like 100 feet you get towards him and suddenly they all realise what's going down. So <laughs> they come for you. Now we are about to jump straight into another cutscene as well for General Radan. One of the clips I think I have salvaged pretty well, but you'll be the judge of that. Before we begin, allow me to paint you the full picture. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. And we just 
jump straight into the fight here. This is attempt number one. Now, I've never done this before, as you can see. <laughs> Didn't get myself completely handed to, but I didn't know what the hell I was doing here. Now, unfortunately, this fight has been massively nerfed over the, I want to say the years, but this fight has been nerfed and buffed and nerfed again because it used to be extremely difficult, but I kind of wish I managed, I wish I played it at the point where it was really difficult because I did find on the second attempt this this was way too easy, way too easy. You have all these summons and actually even when they die you can just resummon them back into the fight, which is a bit of a shame really. Now you do see the weapon I've got here, this is from the previous boss fight I really wanted to put in here, but the creepy ass ladies when you go and kill their god. but. Unfortunately, yeah, the audio was almost unsalvageable, which is a real shame. I lost so many boss fights. And a little spoiler after this, I lost the Mimic fight too, or most of the Mimic fight. Now I can salvage it for like a TikTok or something, or a short. But to be actually part of this video, just it really wasn't going to happen. I just I just couldn't get it to, to go in properly without... Once I'd fix the audio, it, it'd kill itself again, so fight your battle sometimes right so I didn't really <laughs> really bother fighting that one too much longer now you see here I get absolutely destroyed so we jump straight into attempt number two and I work out hey look you can actually dodge his uh, his arrows there they're not actually as difficult as I thought it was now I'll go ahead and quickly grab as many summons as I can and I derp out really hard here as you can see Get the next two in. They go ahead, throw themselves in. And they just go ahead and dive dive in head first. This was my favourite boss fight I have done in the whole of Elden Ring. I, I couldn't name another fight so far at this point in the story that has actually been this good. It was just unique. Most of the fights are unique in their own in their own sense, but this one, the fact that you can just summon in a crap load of allies to come help you. They don't do the biggest amount of damage, but they more likely just tank. That's what you need, is just the tanking ability, because Radan hits, hits hard. And you will see here that the audio is still a little bit jacked in certain places, but I did my best to try and salvage it. I really wanted to show it, because that was the whole point of this, this highlight reel for this week, was completely based on Radan. And straight after I, I kill him, Went a bit trigger happy with his items, went ahead and bought all of his armour and I got a hold of his swords as well, thinking I'd look really cool and maybe roleplay as him, but I had no idea how bad the weight system was for, for his armour and his weapons, it just becomes unmanageable in your first playthrough. So maybe on the second playthrough I may play as him instead. I did go ahead and mess the uh, the stagger up there, which was a bit of a shame, but, you know, it happens, right? Now, like I said, I had been away for the week, so I did my best to record as much as I can. The first day I got back, I did jump on and get the next something like 15 minutes worth of clips, which was great. I didn't expect it to, to go so well, and I got went ahead and found the Mimic the mimic summon and even though that's been nerfed into the ground supposedly it's still broken I went ahead and leveled it up to, to level 3 and you can pretty much just let that thing go kill things and, and tank and all you have to do is go ahead and get a few hits in that's, that's how it feels but you will see actually with the the fights with it um, I go ahead and do actually get through very, very quickly. But I would say the Mimic is definitely my favourite summon in the game. Now, <laughs> there, there is a little way of cheesing the Mimic fight, which felt a little bit broken to me, but you can just drop, not drop your weapon, but as soon as you walk in the room, you just take off your weapon and your shield and he just tries to Bruce Lee you the entire time and <laughs> it doesn't hit very hard, it hits like 10s to 20s and you can just go ahead and put your, your weapon back in and 
you know, bish bash bosh. It's just ridiculously easy that fight. So you will see I'm trying to bait these big boulder things to be thrown at me. And I just couldn't get the damn things to be thrown. I'm not really quite sure what I was doing wrong. But this is where we go ahead and just slaughter him. It was my favourite fire. I absolutely loved it. And that does remind me I too still need to go ahead and sort the ring he drops. Or the rune, sorry, not the ring. Because I still haven't activated it. Because the, the runes that you get in this are pretty broken if you have the old rune arcs as well. I did also have some amazing cinematics that I thought were cool. But I just couldn't get them in here. The, the clips were so badly broken. I'll get them in on next week's one. Because we unlock the city of Necron, I think the word is. We hit the whole underground system as well. Obviously that's part of the underground system. Finding the mimic as well. But we ended up in some really weird and wonderful places. And it would just would have been great to have had these clips put in. you will see that the next clip loads straight into the city of Necron. And this is just as we've killed the Mimic. That's the first sight of grace you get. And for me now, I am pretty much just running off to go find the Mimic. Now, as a disclaimer, you do need a stone sword key, I believe that they're called, to unlock the imp statues. Now you can go ahead and buy two or three of them straight from the round table. And as soon as you go to the old hags, the old ladies, the, the gruesome twosome, whatever we want to call, <laughs> call, call the deers, you can go ahead and buy a few keys there. I don't think after you buy two or three of them, I don't think they restock. I think that is the end of it. But there's also a few vendors in various parts of the game. You can just go ahead and buy them. And they're pretty much scattered around the map anyway. So you can just go ahead and quickly get... I, I don't have any videos on locations, but I'm pretty sure YouTube will probably have absolute ton of locations for them. So we go ahead and grab the Lost Grace here. I think I've edited out my death, but if you follow this path, this path will enable you to go get the Mimic Tear Ashes. And I do highly recommend just spending five or ten minutes just going to get at least the first few levels of them done. It's pretty easy. As soon as you unlock is it the Wells, is it like Sophia Wells or something like that? Sounds like a name, doesn't it? As soon as you unlock that place, there's a few of the upgrades you can just run around and grab straight away. And you may see some... There you go. Extremely bad uh, editing there. <laughs> straight into it. But we'll run around here and there is a drop down that I ran past the first time which is really stupid but you'll see here just drop straight down and you just follow the path all the way through go through either of the windows it doesn't really matter here but I think I opt for the second window drop down and on your left is actually the black wheat knife I think it's called which you can change your weapon art and then on the right here is the imp statue that I was talking about and my most frustrating part of this game so we go ahead and unlock it here I forget to press X so I want to go sneak up behind this guy to take him out trying to attack and I realise ah damn I've got that set up so you see me start panicking I hit the, hit the coffins, miss him several times almost get myself killed but we get through it turn around and we go ahead and just grab the mimic tier ashes There we are, the Mimic Ash is the most broken thing in this game. So you will see see me kind of roaming around now for the next few clips. I just really wanted to find a boss fight. I'd gone ahead and upgraded this weapon. And I thought, oh, okay, what's kicking my ass? The Double Tree Sentinels, because this fight sucks. It really sucks. And I didn't mean to, but I didn't actually spawn the second Tree Sentinel. It was kind of by accident, this. Because I didn't realise that if you go ahead and just aggro one behind them, the other one doesn't aggro and, and it has a very small aggro field. So you see me derp out here pretty hard several times. And I'm kind of just getting the Mimic to do it. The Mimic's doing jump hits, he's rolling, he's buffing himself. 
the mimic is putting me to shame. It's pretty much how I should be playing the game. But I don't. I sit on torrent and I run around in circles praying my summons do the damage. And they do. And the other tree sentinel realises, ah, we got a problem here. So I quickly summon in my torrent again because he got himself killed. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to dismount for a bit here because I've got my tree, my tree sentinel. I've got my own mimic. I mean, the mimics are so good. The only downside with the mimic is, is it takes 660 HP, but you know, for something that is essentially you, I don't think they have a damage reduction on them. I mean, I could be wrong. That's something I do need to have a look at, but it's just so broken. I, don't, I can't explain how broken the Tree Sentinel is. Not the Tree Sentinel, the Mimic. The Tree Sentinels are just annoying, especially the first one you come up against. I think there's the From Software actually released the chart of the top five bosses that have killed the most players. And the Tree Sentinel in Limgrave is number three, I think. Something like 175 million kills, it's claimed. It's so strong in the early game. But you go ahead and absolutely smash the Double Tree Sentinels. Then I could have easily have edited this bit out, but I go on just a little bit of a, an exploration here. I want to have a look at the scenes. I am trying to work out how to get into the capital because I didn't Google it. Normally I sit in Google or YouTube somewhere or someone's Reddit post trying to work out how the hell I'm supposed to get to places. And I didn't have to for this, I just followed the path round. Found a staircase, followed the staircase, and almost got obliterated by these giant... Oh, have I edited those giant things out? I have. I have edited the giants out. Now, before you get to this point, there's Matt archers trying to take you out. There's some random dude in the forest that comes charging at you with a massive axe, trying to kill you whilst you're on your way up this hill. No, I haven't edited them out. That's a lie. There we go. So I'm absolutely getting harpooned. I'm dodging them. And then on your left, you should be able to see the tree start looking like they're getting smashed to pieces. And this geezer just comes out of it. There we go. Just appears out of nowhere. But these things, even though they hit like a truck, and that's a really bad example there. They're not very fast, they're not very efficient, you can just kind of bypass them. They're not really worth your time killing, in my opinion. The old completionists out there will sell you, it's worth it. We go ahead and get to the next level of Tree Sentinel, and this one unlocks the capital, which I didn't know. I thought we'd kill it and go on to another fight, but I was wrong. Now, I've put in my several attempts at this boss because it did take me two attempts to work out what the hell I was doing. And the first time, this is our first try, I crack him down to, uh, again, like 15%, 20% HP. And I thought, oh yeah, I've got this. I've got this easily. But nah, I didn't have it. <laughs> and I died, and I could have cried. I wish I had a face cam because my reaction was priceless at the time or it felt priceless at the time I can see why these these versions of the tree sentinels cause problems <coughs> sorry excuse me there it's the most I've spoken in a long time I just derp out. The stupid thing for me is I'm stood every time I've stood on his attacking side. There we go. I stopped fifteen percent. What's that like? Seven, eight percent. My mimic's still trying to buff itself. Ignore the graphical error at the bottom there. That is an issue of my capture card. Every so often, when it gets a little bit too hot, it throws this weird graphical glitch. And annoyingly. It captures the glitch. So we go ahead and grab the statue here. 
Not that we're planning on summoning any help anytime soon. And this attempt is just terrible. I'm just going to spoil it straight away. It's shocking. I get a nice heavy hit off. And a second nice heavy hit off. And I'm thinking I'm a boss dodging everything. You can see some other geezer doing his thing as well. You know, this was going really well, this attempt. And then... I don't think I got completely comboed out, but yeah. wasn't far off. The one thing in this game you have to learn is not to get greedy. Don't get greedy. The more greedy you get, the more attempts you're going to have to do at a boss. There we go. I just, I don't even know what, my brain cells died at that point. So we respawn in for our last attempt. Then we tried something else. Realising our Mimic actually gets all the buffs that we have. So pre-buff myself. I only have one buff. That's something I really need to work on. Finding additional Art of Wars. Especially as it's... I can never pronounce it. The old ritual Japanese one. Can't pronounce it, but the one where you stab yourself and you gain, you lose like 20% HP, but you gain from like 20% attack bonus. You can just heal yourself at the end. Seppuku is the word I'm looking for. Yes, Seppuku. You can get that on a different weapon, stab yourself, and uh, yeah, 20% extra on that on that weapon. But I'm not. I don't know if I would use it on my weapon because I don't even know if you can actually because the Bloodhound Fang already has a really cool and really helpful Art of War on it where you can lunge in then you lunge out and then you lunge back in again it's brilliant it's like the most pathetic way to play the game sometimes but <laughs> I like it there we go I absolutely dominate him the third time Something like 50,000 runes, I think, for, for killing. We unlock their items. I haven't actually tried the items yet. But this here is just me finally making our way into the capital. Now, over the course of the, the few days I really had to play, because I was away Monday to Friday, and uh, we'll see, now it's Friday evening, and I released the videos on Saturday. So, I didn't get a chance to go ahead and find any more bosses, but I found myself over the course of the few days I played. Ended up in weird locations. Oh, obviously, I unlocked the Great Lift. I ended up over there. I ended up at the capital. I ended up in the city of Necron. I ended up in a few other places as well. And if I can salvage those clips, I'll throw them in the next week's episode. But I'm going to guess next week's episode is probably focusing around the capital a little bit. And trying to find the next, not demi boss, but I guess the next story boss, because we've killed four story bosses, I think now. Three to four story bosses? No. Four or five story bosses. But we've only got two great runes Godrex and Radans. And this is just me here, just exploring a little bit, because. I've never been to the capital before. Go ahead, I'm picking everything up. I'm like a kid in the candy store. Not that we really have those in the UK, but <laughs> get my point, right? Reading all the messages. And I do go ahead and get quite a beautiful panoramic view of the of the capital. Not at this point, but I do run around and get a bit of a better view because there's actually a weapon I want to get in the capital. It's on the Thunderbolt. I can't remember the name of it. But it's a real pain in the ass to get hold of. 
because you have a huge chance you'll fall off and you'll see the bolt right in front in a sec just on the right there on there as a as a weapon you can go ahead and go get but look at that part of the capital and on our left we have the royal bubble boys with their bubble blowers now I one shot these things however I made the mistake at the start thinking they were friendly they're weird looking things but I'm wandering around and then it just it turns on me so I turn on it and this is the move I was just talking about it's, it's brilliant now we did do a little bit in the capital but it was mostly just me dying over and over and over again trying to work out where I'm going so we didn't really include it in and then we got the big big bubblelucious lord of the bubbles I have no idea just a bit of bigger version but this is it drawing to a close now I hope you all have enjoyed it it's a slightly shorter episode I hope you are enjoying the, the highlight reel rather than just gameplay after gameplay after gameplay now if you do enjoy it don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you have made it this far. I have dropped the old little reminders every so often through the video. <laughs> I hope it's not too annoying, but it's there so I don't have to keep saying it. And uh, my friend of mine actually made the logos in the top right hand corner, predominantly for TikTok videos and shorts. But I think it just adds a little bit more to the video. I get she produces and provides a lot of the story, but we only really get torrent from her at the start, and I, I get we can do upgrades as well, but apart from that, she just randomly appears and wastes our time. That's how it feels. But that's just my opinion on the matter. But we will become Elden Lord. That is a promise.